Good afternoon, or good morning, good evening, whatever time of day you happen to be watching this video. This is a Nebraska LTAP construction math course. This course was designed to be taught in the classroom face-to-face. -face. However, we are putting it into this format um, in terms of a video online to facilitate those who uh, are at a distance and cannot uh, easily get into the Lincoln office to attend the class due to either distance or time constraints. So, let's get started. My name is Terry malik -Madani. I'll be your instructor. Uh, as we go along today, if you have any questions, problems, need additional help regarding any of the material we're covering, or just the course in general, please contact me at Nebraska LTAP. That information, the contact information, is in the materials that you had access to and probably downloaded and have in front of you. A few instructions before we get started, since this is a video course. Uh, we will, this, this course is broken up into smaller instructional seg segments. After I cover a particular instructional segment, you'll be asked to pause or stop the video to work a number of exercises to help you apply the, the concepts that we just covered, the operations that we just covered, and make sure that you do understand and you can apply them. This also allows you to take as much time as you need with the exercises. Once you've completed the exercises uh, for that particular segment, uh, go ahead and hit resume or play uh, to start the video up again. The very next slide will provide you with the answers to the exercises that you just completed. Of course, you don't want to look ahead to get those answers first because that's really not going to help you in terms of um, learning the material. So make sure that you do uh, take your time to work the exercises before you move ahead to the answers. And again, contact me if you have any questions along the way. Within this course, what we will cover, um, what we hope you'll be able to do by the end of this course, is understand the order of operations, and by that we mean uh, when you're given, given a long string of, uh, of operations to calculate within one problem, um, you know, what is the correct order in which to do that. So we'll go over that. We'll review and perform some basic math operations. We'll move on to calculate uh, fractions and ratios, which many people do struggle with, in part because it's not something we deal with and work with, you know, in our everyday lives. We'll spend a little time with conversion in terms of converting units of measure calculating unit weight, and then finally performing area and volume calculations. So we're going to start with section one. With this, this uh, course is broken up into four chapters or sections. So let's begin with section one. Basic math calculations. I mentioned that we would be discussing the order of operations. There's an acronym for that, and it is PEMDAS, as you can see up here. P-E-M-D-A-S, that stands for Parentheses, let's see here, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. What that means is, uh, you know, as you know, when we're working on a, a math problem, we don't solve it, we don't work it from left to right as we do when we're reading across the page. There's a particular order in which we have to complete the calculations and the operations within that. The rule of thumb is that you start when you have, see how we have a couple layers of parentheses here. So we have parentheses inside another set of parentheses. Whenever you see that, complete all of the calculations within that inner set of parentheses first, then move to the outer set of parentheses, and if, however many layers of parentheses you have until you no longer have parentheses. Then you complete the rest of the operations outside of that. So for this example, we would begin with the 2 plus 1, complete that operation, which is 3. But then you notice whatever is inside this parenthesis, we are supposed to square it. And that is the exponent that we're talking about right here. When it's squared, we're multiplying, excuse me, multiplying it by, our, by itself. So this was 3. 3 squared will be 3 times 3, which will be 9. Okay? So then when we have completed what is in that first or innermost set of parentheses this right here is 9. Then we can move on to the next set and that would give us 4 plus 9 which is 13 and then we will have completed this and then we move on to the next. So we start with the innermost. Uh, so we begin with what's in the parentheses, complete each of those on each level 
and um, exponents are going to be first and after the parentheses. Then we multiply and divide either one in either order. After we've completed the next operation, any multiplication or division in that, um, within that operation, then finally we add or subtract. So let's look at an example here. So the example we had uh, on the last slide, 4 plus, we've got in parentheses, 2 plus 1 squared. And we talked about what this is. We're going to do what's in the parentheses first. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this ends up being 4 plus 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. And then finally what we do is add. Remember that's at the, at the end of the order of operations is addition or subtraction. So we add at the end. 4 plus 9 equals 13. Another example, now we've got, um, you know, we've got the two layers of parentheses. We still do the same. We start with 2 plus 1 equals 3. Um, so we've got that here. We're bringing that down and just bringing everything below. So we still have the 4 here plus this is 3 squared, which we now know is 4 plus 9. Still, we have to complete what's in this parentheses before we can multiply everything by 2. So we have to complete whatever's inside of there, which we do. 4 plus 9 is 13. Then we can multiply by 2, okay, which equals 26. So that's just a review of the order of operations. If we do have any um, exercises or anything that you have on the job that requires that level of complexity or several operations, uh, that's just a review for the order in which you do that. So the basic math operations that we're really is going to be review, I know for all of you, you use these operations uh, on a daily basis more than likely. But what we want to talk about primarily are the different symbols that are used for multiplication and division so that when you see these either on a test, uh, on you know somebody's handwriting as they're writing something out for you, or in a, any of these slides, you all know that of course 2x3 is 2 times 3. That one we all know. However, also when you have 2 and you have another number in parentheses, no matter what this number is, or series of numbers, you're multiplying 2 by whatever is inside there. So that is also multiplication, 2 times whatever is inside here. Finally, uh, you may see 2 dot 3. That dot is just another symbol for multiplication. If it was down here, of course, that would be, whoop, let's go back. <laughs> if it was down here, of course, below on the same line, that would be 2.3, which is a decimal. But if you see that dot in the middle, that's also multiplication, 2 times 3. And division as well, um, this division symbol, and probably this one you're familiar with, long division from grade school. But don't forget that fractions are actually a form of division as well. So 4 over 2 is actually 4 divided by 2. Okay, So the same thing, just in a different form. All right, now that we've just kind of reviewed those basic operations and order of operations, I'd like to wake up your brain a little bit, do a little bit of uh, kind of math warm-up exercises, and have you uh, get to worksheet one. You should have all of the materials for this class that you need printed in front of you, all the worksheets. Uh, go ahead and complete problems or exercises one through seven. There are 11 on that page. You can complete eight through 11 if you would like more practice. Uh, those are have a little bit more um, in terms of operations or level of complexity, but they're still they're not very difficult if you would like to work through those as well. So pause this slide and at this slide and uh, complete the exercises. When you are finished, then resume this presentation and you'll be provided with the answers. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too difficult. And like I said, it was kind of just a warm up. Um, taking you know the basic operations that we just talked about, but seeing those in you know a word problem form or in you know types of problems that you might see out in the field. So here are the answers to those exercises. Uh, if you need to pause the video at this point to take time to check all the answers against the answers that you received or you uh, you arrived at. If uh, your answers don't match what we have here, go ahead and try to work through the problem again and see if you can arrive at that answer. It's much better for you to try to work out you know, how to get to the answer. You're going to learn the process is much better than if uh, you, know, you just uh, call me and ask me how did I do that. So see if you can arrive at that answer by yourself. 
If not, if you're still having difficulty, you're not sure how we got to the answer that we have here, go ahead and circle that problem. It's probably a good idea to just circle the problems that you'd like a little bit of explanation or help with. And when you're complete, when you've completed the entire course, then you can contact me and we can go over all of these at once. All right, so that was, like I said, a warm up of just some basic operations. Now we're going to jump into ratio and fractions. Although these are probably something you do use on a daily basis, um, probably you're not doing the computations on a daily basis, but we do use ratios and fractions every day. So ratio is a numerical comparison between two different things. It can be expressed as a fraction, a decimal, or percent. Some examples of this comparison of two different things, you know, if I have a bowl of five pieces of fruit and somebody says what's the ratio of apples to oranges in, in that bowl of fruit you would say well three apples to two oranges that is the ratio three to two um, recall what I said on the last slide that we can you know the fraction three over two is actually three divided by two so we can divide that out and turn that into a decimal so three over two is also 1.5 so we can state that ratio as either three to two or 1.5. It's basically the same uh, ratio, same number. Or, you know, comparing five bags of cement, if you have a mixture, you may have five bags of cement to every 10 gallons of water. Again, that's a ratio. Five to 10, multiplying that out, dividing that out, it's 0.5. Or you would say, basically, you're putting in 50% uh, amount of cement in comparison to the water that you have. Okay, so half as much cement as you do have water for that mixture. Some other times when you might be using this is, you know, a mixture of fine to coarse aggregate, and you can probably come up with many other examples. So let's kind of walk through one here. Uh, let's talk about a concrete mix where we have 67.5 pounds of water and 150 pounds of cement. And somebody says, so what is the water to cement ratio? And we might want to know that ratio because probably we're going to have uh, different amounts of water or cement at some point, and we're going to need to know how much of the quantity of the other uh, item to get the, the same mixture. Because this is the mixture we want, the 67.5 pounds of water and 150 pounds of cement. That's the mixture that we want. What is that ratio? So we can duplicate it if we need to. Uh, basically what we do, the water to cement ratio, we're going to put the 67.5 pounds, which is the amount of water, on the numerator, and then 150 pounds of cement as a denominator, the bottom of the fraction. Okay? Um, and that's going to give us the water to cement ratio, which is 0.45. And when you look at those numbers, that kind of makes sense to you. If you were out in the field mixing this, you know, 67 and a half pounds of water and it's a little bit less than half of what you would have of it if you were weighing um, how many pounds of cement you had. So you look at the, the ratio and you, yep, it's 0.45, that looks about right. So once we have this number, this ratio, 0.45, we know that this is the ratio we need for this mixture to, to get the concrete mix that we want here. So then we can apply it for any amount of water or cement to find out how much of the other item we need. So the next question asks, how much water will we need to mix with 250 pounds of cement? Up above, we had 150 pounds. That's how we got to that ratio. Well, somebody says, well, we've got 250 pounds of cement. I want you to mix that uh, so we have a ratio of water to cement of 0.45. Well, what, how you do that is multiply the 250 pounds of cement times the 0.45, and that is 112.5 pounds. So that if you have 250 pounds, what that tells us, 250 pounds of cement is going to need to have 112.5 pounds of water in order to have the right mixture or the right ratio of water to cement that we need for this job. Okay. However, you can flip that around too. We talked about water to cement ratio. We can do just the opposite and have cement to water ratio. And I'm sure this is going to you know, be common sense for a lot of you. But let's just go over that very quickly. If it's cement to water ratio, we're going to put the 150 pounds of cement right here as the numerator in the fraction, at the top of the fraction. 
and then the 67.5 pounds of water as a denominator or the bottom. When we divide 150 pounds by 67.5 pounds, what we get is 2.222, and actually this goes on um, <laughs> for, um, for eternity basically. <laughs> So um, the cement to water ratio is 2.222. And when you think about that last slide, this makes sense to us, right? Because the water to cement ratio, we said, yeah, it's a little bit less than half. It's not exactly half, but it's a little bit less than half of the amount of water as we have of cement. When we flip that and say what's the cement to water ratio, we're saying basically the same thing. Uh, we're just flipping it and saying, well, that means we need twice as much a little bit more than twice as much cement as we have water. And that's what we have here, 2.222. Okay, So hopefully that is clear. Uh, so now in this one, we're given uh, the how much water we have, 112.5 pounds of water, which, as you recall, is the amount we had on the last slide. The last slide asked us if we had 250 pounds of cement, we'd get 112 point, we'd need 112.5 pounds of water. So we're kind of doing it backwards just to see if we get the same answer here. We have 112.5 pounds of water. If we multiply it by the ratio of cement to water here, we do get 249.97, which rounds up to 250 pounds of cement, which is what we had on the previous slide. So hopefully that is clear, not clear as cement or mud or anything like that. If you need any additional help in understanding this concept, uh, you know, just let me know and we can, we can work on some more of these. We talk about slope um, as also that is a fraction, a ratio, however you want to look at it, okay? So slope is um, expressed as, it's a ratio expressed as the rise over run. Um, and you know slope is basically we've got an incline um, of some sort. The rise is the vertical portion of that incline, okay? From point uh, A to point B here, how much of a vertical distance does that travel? That's the rise. The run is the horizontal dip, uh, distance, okay? So it's always the rise over the run is going to give us the slope. In this instance, um, the rise is uh, 300 feet and the run is 250 feet. So our slope is 300 over 250. And you can, as we have done before, um, you can al always um, divide that out to uh, arrive at a fraction or a percentage. So let's look at a couple examples here. Um, you may run into issues like these or problems like these that you need to resolve out in the field. If you have either, if you have two of the variables or two of the numbers that make up this equation here, slope equal, equals rise over run, then you can find what the third one is. Okay. Um, for the first one, number one, what we're given here is a rise of 65 feet, so the vertical distance we've, we've been told is 65 feet. We don't know what the horizontal distance is and that's what they want us to find. How far out does this go from point A horizontal, horizontally on the ground or whatever? And we know that the slope um, of this particular line that we're looking at is 1 over 6 or 1 to 6. Rise over run, 1 to 6. So we can solve to find out what this run is by using our formula here. A slope we know is 1 over 6, so we put this, this is our slope, equals the rise, 65 feet, over the run. Okay, so we're just substituting the known numbers, known quantities we have, for um, the variables that we're talking about here. So we have 1 sixth equals 65 over R. R is just um, our abbreviation for run. Now, you, if you don't remember, I'm going to just review this kind of quickly. If you have a fraction equals a fraction and you're trying to find out what one variable is, in order to do that, what you do is what we call cross multiplying those two fractions. So you multiply the numerator on one side times the denominator on the opposite side. Okay? When you do that, you get 1r, or that's just r. And then on the other side of the equal sign, you are now multiplying this denominator, the 6, 
times the numerator on the opposite side. So it makes a cross, like an x, when you cross multiply those. So the denominator by the numerator, uh, that goes on the other side. So you can see we have our 65 feet times 6. That gives us, when we multiply that out, 390 feet. So that tells us that our run, the question that was asked of us, with this slope and with this rise, how far out does that go? What is our horizontal distance? And we can say that it's 390 feet. All right. Number two is uh, um, more uh, basic in terms of the formula. We're being asked for the slope. We're given the run and the rise, and we're asked what is the slope. So uh, we're just plugging those numbers in again, like as we did for number one. Uh, we have 10.5 as the rise and 42 as the run. And we divide those out and we get 0.25. Remember I said that those can be, the slope can be um, um, stated as a fraction or a decimal point or as this, what we have here, 1 to 4, a ratio. So all of these are the same. This slope that we're talking about here with this rise and this run, we could say it's 0.25 or 1 over 4 or 1 to 4. Okay. All right. Pause your video now and complete problems 1 and 2 on worksheet number 2. Once you've completed those, then uh, resume the video and check your answers to see if they are correct. So here are the solutions to the ratio problems, uh, num numbers 1 and 2 on worksheet 2. You see we've uh, worked out the steps here so you can see each one of the steps. For uh, the first one, we had uh, a ratio of 23 pounds of salt per 100 gallons of water. Okay, those were the original amounts. And we had to find out what the ratio was first because the next question we're asked in this problem is, so how many pounds of salt are needed if I have 500 gallons of water? Probably something that could you know, happen quite often uh, on the job. So when we do calculate that out, the 23 pounds, the um, salt to water ratio, 23 pounds of salt to 100 gallons of water, we get 0.23 as the ratio. We need to know how much salt now if we have 500 gallons of water. So we're multiplying that times 0.23, and we can see that we need 115 pounds of salt for 500 gallons of water. And again, as I said uh, before when we talked about ratios, it's a good idea to kind of common sense that, just look at it um, in terms of your original amount. You have about five times as much water as you did last time. So you're going to need about, obviously, five times as much salt as you did last time. And this is almost 25, right? So, you know, if you looked at what would be five times as much of that, you know, it would be a little under 125. So you can always check your work by, you know, looking at does that make sense logically. Step two, then, you have uh, 60 pounds of coarse aggregate, 30 pounds of fine aggregate. And this one just asks you for the ratio of fine to coarse aggregate. So remember that order does... Um, does have meaning. If they asked for coarse to fine aggregate, you would switch those numbers. So the fine to coarse aggregate is 30 to 60, or 30 over 60, 0.5. That's, that's what it looks like, right? Half. You put as half, half as much fine as you do coarse, or 1 to 2. So those are all different ways of talking about that ratio. Okay, that does conclude uh, section 1 for the construction math. Go ahead and take a break if you need to, and when you're ready, start up the second video, Construction Math, Section 2.